So our last step. Last step here is electron transport chain to aerobic cell respiration. E T C. And we're going to see a chain of electrons move through some proteins. We've had now glycolysis to link reaction. to Krebs cycle. And in the Krebs cycle, we saw NADH and FADH2 get produced, and now is when they're going to be used in the electron transport chain. Before we draw this out, let's take another look at the mitochondria. And the mitochondria has double membrane. So we have outer membrane. Inner membrane. The inside portion is the matrix where Krebs cycle takes place. The space between the inner and outer membrane is called the inter membrane space. And these little knob like structures in the inner membrane are called cristi. And they help to increase the surface area. The cristi help to increase the surface area because where the electron transport chain takes place is in or on, involves the inner membrane. So the more inner membrane there is, the more space there is for this process to take place. And the electron transport chain, here's the money. Electron transport chain is where all the money for the cell, meaning the ATP, is going to get produced. The inner membrane space is this space between, I'm not going to color all of it, but it's this space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane. <laughs> so now that we've looked at our mitochondria, let's focus in on essentially uh, like this portion here. That's what we're going to focus in on. <laughs> if you recall, our membrane is a bilayer, specifically a phospholipid bilayer we talked about earlier in the year. Okay, yeah. And we have a phosphate head, which is the circle. And we have fatty acid tails, two of them. And they orientate themselves so the tails face one another because they are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like the liquid. And the heads are hydrophilic so they can withstand or like it. And I'm not going to draw these for everything, so I'll just use some lines. And I want to give you an idea of where we're looking at in the cell. So this portion that I'm drawing here, um, this is the inner membrane. So this membrane that we're going to draw is the inner membrane. Above it is going to be the inter membrane space. Below it will be the matrix. Mm -hmm. 
involved in the electron transport chain are a bunch of proteins. Protein number one, two, three, Four, and one more right here. And this one has a specific name. It's called the cytochrome C protein. Cyto C, cytochrome C protein. So this electron transport chain process is going to start with NADH that was produced in the Krebs cycle. It's going to react with this first protein to become NAD+. It's going to release hydrogen ions. And it's also going to release two electrons. It releases two electrons. These electrons are going to move through the other proteins. As they move through protein number one, it causes a hydrogen ion to move across the membrane. So it moves from the matrix into the intermembrane space. accumulating hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. At protein number two, more electrons are released from FADH2. More electrons are released. As those electrons move through protein number three, additional hydrogen ions move across the membrane. Electrons will move through cytochrome C and through number four, where further hydrogen ions will move across the membrane. Those electrons will finally come out and be released from electro, uh, protein number four. We have an accumulation of hydrogen ions now in the intermembrane space. And this space within the mitochondria is pretty small, allowing for a high concentration of hydrogen ions to develop. Thus, in the matrix is the low hydrogen ion concentration. Molecules move generally from what direction to what direction? They move from high to low. The last enzyme involved in this process It's 
called ATP synthase. It is the only way for those hydrogen ions to get back to the matrix, to move from high to low concentration. So because we have such a large amount, there's such a high concentration of them in the intermembrane space, those hydrogen ions will move through the ATP synthase. As they do so, it causes the ATP, ATP synthase to spin. It's kind of like a windmill where the windmill itself is the ATP synthase and the wind is the hydrogen ions. Those hydrogen ions are causing the ATP synthase to spin. As it does, it combines an ADP and a phosphate and it couples them together to form an ATP molecule. As more and more hydrogens move across the membrane through the ATP synthase, more and more ATP get produced. We now are starting to build up the number of hydrogens in the matrix, but we need to maintain that low hydrogen concentration. In order for those hydrogens to not just sit there and accumulate, we need to get rid of them. And how they're disposed of goes back to what we started with at the beginning of this unit, where O2 plus some electrons plus some hydrogen ions combine to form a water molecule. So the whole purpose of this is not really to make water, but there needs to be some sort of place for the hydrogen ions to connect to, to bond to, so they're out of the way. What provides that is the oxygen, where a half of an O2 molecule O2 is oxygen gas. So one oxygen molecule, two electrons, two hydrogens combined to make one water molecule. So that purpose of oxygen, the purpose of us breathing to get that oxygen is to provide or act as a hydrogen ion acceptor, an electron acceptor to make water. That water then will get released or used by the body. And the reason that we continue to breathe is to be able to allow this to happen. So it's not directly involved in the production of the ATP, but it's necessary for this process to be able to take place. Ultimately, about 32-ish ATP are produced per glucose molecule.